In the last lesson we learned what the range mapper is and in this lesson we want to create a little example scene with uh, the options of our range mapper. So let's create a sphere, make it a little bit smaller. So what I basically want to do is I want to create a ball um, which I can move from left to right and the ball should automatically uh, jump like this. Just a bouncing ball. So let's try this. We have our cube. I will create an expresso tag, uh, not a cube, it's a sphere of course. I will create an expresso tag and maybe let me undock this that we can have floating window here. Okay, first of all we need our sphere and we need the, uh, we move it in x direction so we need the x position, coordinates, position, x, and we need our sphere again and create an input port, coordinates, let's move it to the left, input port, coordinates, position, y, because I want to drive the y position of my sphere. And in between we need our new best friend, the range mapper. Okay, perfect. Let's connect them and take a look at them. Okay. I think I will dock it again here. It's much better to see everything. So what we see right now, if I move it to the right, it moves upwards. So that's not exactly what we want. Not like this. So we will have to check our range mapper. Okay, first of all, we need to define our ranges. So I would say if we move it in x direction, maybe something about 100 centimeters. Yeah, so it's small jumps, maybe, maybe 150. Okay, if I move it 150 centimeters to the right, I want the ball to move upwards. So input lower is zero because I start at x zero. And upper is, uh, what was it, 100 or 150? 150. Okay, perfect. So now we need to define how high he should jump. So maybe let's say 100. So that's actually not what we need because if I now start to move it from the left to the right, it will continue to move upwards. So what we need to do is to make a curve. Something like this. So if I move through my input range on this side, he will jump up and come down again. Let's try this. Up, down, up. Oh, what happens here? Oh, we have a problem. Because he does this uh, curve one time and afterwards he will just continue um, to um, to map these values linear. So we have to change that. For this we have modulo. The modulo function um, takes our input range and when we move through our input range we will um, map our output range, so this curve. If we start to move um, more than 150 centimeters to the right he will not continue to map something somewhere he will jump back at this curve and do this action again and when we reached 300, so 2 times 150, he will um, again jump back. So he will constantly jump back in this curve and do this again and again and again. So this is what we need, modulo. And if we now start to move, we see, ah nice, he's jumping. So, But basically we don't need uh, this curve to smooth to be smooth like this, more like because he's bouncing onto the ground, so we need a bounce. This looks better. Boink. Nice. So if we take a look from the side view, I want my uh, sphere always to touch the ground. So if we have our ground plane here on this red line, I want the sphere always to uh, touch the ground and uh, don't uh, intersect with the ground and I want this to be um, no matter how big my sphere is it should be automatically um, 
reassigning this value. So let's try this. To define at which height my uh, sphere starts, we need to define the output lower, so where it starts. If my sphere has a size of, let's make an at 50 maybe, so my radius is 50 centimeters, so it has to be at um, also at 50 centimeters height. So let's check back our range mapper. I will lock this window here that we see it all the time. And input lower, let's type in 50. So perfect. Now we're jumping always onto the floor. But if I change the size of my sphere, it uh, won't work anymore. So we have somehow to tell Expresso to use the radius of, of my sphere in this output lower um, field here. So let's check that out. Open up Expresso. And we will create a second range mapper. Oh no, sorry, we don't need a range mapper here. Um, let's take uh, our range mapper and we want the output lower as an input port. So, output lower. And we want the radius of the sphere to be our output lower. Object properties, radius. Just connect it. Very nice. And if I now refresh my view and make the sphere smaller, it should work. Boink. Works very nice. The problem is uh, that our um, output lower is now um, driven by Expresso, but not the output upper. So if I make my sphere really big, it won't work anymore because it uh, the sphere um, won't jump high enough. So we have to define this one also. So let's go back to Expresso and create an input port for output upper. And I think I want the um, ball always to jump maybe um, four times his own radius. So if we take a look from the side. So this is our sphere, this one is the radius, and I want him to jump um, four times this radius. So one, two, three, four, maybe this high. So we have our radius and we have our output upper, and I want this radius to multiply with four. So we need a math node. Set this one. Set the math node to multiply and connect the radius. You don't need to connect um, two numbers all the time because right now I just want to type in a, a custom factor. So you just connect um, the first port here and type in the second one here. So four and connect this one to output upper. Now if I change my radius it works very nice. So now my ball is always jumping on the floor. And if I jump, change my radius, he will jump higher, but he will always touch the floor. So if I type in a whole number, something like 200, no, 300, then he's touching exactly the ground. So always at 150 centimeter steps. And it's fully dynamic. Very nice. Cool. Set it to zero, so it touches the floor. And of course you can just uh, select the range mapper and customize this curve to define how the jump should look like. So you could also do something like this, that he's uh, longer in the air. So he's jumping up pretty fast, staying there and then falling down again. So more cartoony maybe. Yeah. Nice. So in this lesson we learned how we can use the range mapper to build a little setup. And in the next lesson we will try to uh, use a squash and stretch deformer um, to give our ball a cartoony look. And we want to drive this deformer also with our range mapper.